Hey, welcome back guys. After my last video that I did on the whipping of paracord, I showed a couple of sheaths and an axe handle with some ranger bands on it, and I had a couple of requests to do a video on ranger bands. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about ranger bands, uh, more specifically, uh, bicycle inner tube. And it could be any type of inner tube. It could be bicycle inner tube. I've seen some guys use uh, tractor tire inner tubes. Um, any type of inner tubes that you can get a hold of, you're going to be able to make some ranger bands and do some really cool projects with them. So, um, giving you a quick look here on what they're going to look like when you get them. The best way to get ranger bands that I've found is you can buy bicycle inner tubes online or you can buy them at Walmart, but they're not cheap. Um, they're not cheap at all. You're going to be spending a little bit of money if you purchase them commercially. What I've found that works for me the best is we have a local bike store uh, near here, bicycle store, and I haven't done it for a couple of years now, but maybe every couple of years I'll email them and ask them if they have any old bicycle inner tubes that are damaged or they're going to get rid of that they're not going to use. And they always are more than happy to provide them with me. Um, as I said, it's been a couple of years since I've gotten a hold of them because they last so long. I mean, you can see the size of this one. This is just one that was in a box that they gave me. They last a long time. They have many uses. And what I'm going to do here, guys, is just turn the camera around and we'll talk a little bit more about them, kind of the how and the why and how we can make different projects with them and give you some ideas of what you could use them for. So stick around, guys. Okay, guys, so here's some of the different size ranger bands that I got in the box that the bicycle store provided me. Um, there was a lot more in there. Over the course of time I've used a lot of them. But this is just an example. This is kind of a mid-sized one. And when you get them, they're going to be together. Kind of like I just showed you. Like this one here. They're going to be one big inner tube. And I always start to give myself the most bang for my buck out of the ranger band I always start where the um, little nozzle is and I cut right there and then that gives me full use of the bicycle inner tube so I cut as close as I can to this thing once I cut that I have full use and um, as far as how to cut them they're very easy to cut. There's a couple different ways. You can use scissors. I have my uh, Gerber multi-tool here. Make sure that shows up on camera. And you want to cut them to the size that you want. So if you want just your basic little um, rubber band use, You can cut it just a little bit off and that's going to give you about a rubber band size. The difference between these and rubber bands though is these are more heavy duty. These are going to last longer and they're not going to break as easily. If you go to the store and you ask for heavy duty rubber bands, they kind of laugh at you and they don't really know what you're talking about. They say, well we have rubber bands but I don't know what you mean by heavy duty rubber bands. These are heavy duty rubber bands, ranger bands. Um, let's say we need to do something a little bit, a project a little bit bigger. All we're gonna do is just cut a bigger size off. I mean, it's all up to you. Once you get these ranger bands from your local bike store, it's like a, a blank slate that you can work with. So you have the bigger ones that you can use for different wraps, and I'll show you that here in a second. Um, here's a couple that are cut down to size. I have this one. I have another one. This is a thicker one. So this is kind of like the thinner Ranger Band, or the thinner bicycle tube that they gave me. This size actually works really well for a lot of different things. 
then a little bit thicker, this one here, then a little bit thinner, this one here, that's kind of pretty, pretty thin, but I like the thinner ones a lot. They work well, they stretch well. Um, here's another little piece that I had previously cut. And then here's that big one that I was just showing that I have yet to cut. So the way that I started out is you can see the nozzle here and it has a circle around it. Let's use a knife this time because you could also use a knife to do this. I'm going to go right past the circle so I know I give myself enough room and then just cut it like that. There we go. I now have full use. And then with a knife, my Mora Classic number 2 that I did modifications with, by the way. With my knife, I can set it down and cut it that way. I can set it down and slice into it. Or I can just judge what I want and cut it that way. And there we go. I have a thicker Ranger band for my needs. Um... You want to be mindful that, remember, these are used uh, bicycle inner tubes. So they're most of the time they're going to have a white film on the inside, which doesn't really hurt anything or bother anything. They just, you want to wash your hands after handling them. Um, the more you use them, the more this powdery substance comes off. But there's a lot of projects you could use them for. And we're going to get into that here. I just wanted to give you an idea of what they look like when you get them. So if you ask a bike, bicycle store if they have any inner tubes that they're not using, that's how they're going to come. They're going to come attached. You want to cut it right next to the uh, nozzle to start off, and that's going to give you the full length. And then cut it to taste. Cut the small ones for rubber band size, nice and thin and then cut them thicker and bigger or wider for other type projects. So now that I've shown you those guys, let me see, number one, pretty much, well, there's a lot of number one things that I use them for. They're tremendous at holding uh, tins closed any type of tin you have. I've seen guys use them on um, plastic uh, waterproof tins just to hold them together. This is just a simple Altoids tin that I keep a ton of char cloth in. You can probably see that. So it doesn't stay closed by itself. Well, kind of. Just not really well. And once it gets bumped around, it will pop open. But let's grab this thinner one that we um, made. and just throw it around. That's all I do. Throw it around there and now it can be bumped around and thrown around all I need and this Ranger Band holds it on there. I've also heard guys say that uh, these Ranger Bands, and I've seen it on video so they're not telling stories or anything like that, that they're good at fire starting. So if you hold a lighter up to them they're going to work in an emergency and I'm sure they will and they're good to have around for that purpose but I don't really make a habit of burning um, non-natural material if I don't need to. So I don't burn rubber a whole lot in the woods. So it's not something that I do. However, they are there. That is there if you need it. So some I only throw one around there. That does me just fine. If you have a bigger case or something else that you're trying to hold, you can throw a couple of them on there. Hold it together even better. Another thing that I found this works well with is um, char cloth. If you are burning your char cloth, or let's say that we've made some char cloth, let's take that off. When we just made some char cloth, you can put the ranger band over the hole and snuff it out. So if this is punk wood and we have some punk wood lit and we got our fire, we can throw it back in there and cover our hole with the ranger band and it's going to snuff that spark out of your punk wood or your char cloth. As far as knives, knives are another thing. Knife sheaths I use them for all the time. You can see this uh, 
Pathfinder Leather Sheath for the Mora Classic number 2. I'll get to that in one second, but the sheath itself, I just have one Ranger band around it, and I keep a ferro rod in the front, and I keep the striker in the back. Even though I can use the back of my knife, I do like having the striker around. I like using those strikers. So I can just keep this right on my belt and have the ferro rod attached and have the striker attached and they've never gone anywhere. I mean, these Ranger Bands hold tight and they last a long time. As far as Ranger Bands on the knife itself, the more classic number two um, can be kind of slick for you at times. So what I've done is I've thrown, after some modifications here for grip, I've also thrown a couple Ranger Bands right onto there for um, assistance with grip. And some people will throw one like this on there to cover a lot of the handle. Like my son, Max, likes to do that. He likes to throw a bigger Ranger Band on there. So he has the whole majority of the handle covered in a Ranger Band. And that's, that's another nice way to do it too. So let me show you a couple other things here really quick. Um... Bushcraft Black, there's a sheath right there, and I just threw a ranger band around that. And the main purpose of why I throw one ranger band around a sheath is for the ferro rod. I can simply throw a ferro rod in there at any time, and it's a belt hang, so it can hang off of my belt and have the ferro rod right there. And that's simple to do. Here's another more classic number two, and I showed this one in my uh, previous video when I did the whipping. There's the whipping under there. There's the ranger bands. This one I just put one, two, three, four thin strips, but you can choose which one you want. You can put the ferro rod through all of them, or you can put the ferro rod through one of them, and that's not going anywhere. That's going to hold perfect for you. Let's see what else I got here, guys. Here's another one where I kind of utilize the Ranger Bands in a different way. I have a thicker one on here and then a thinner one on top. And you can see the ferro rod right there. This is a bigger ferro rod that's going through. This is one of Joey's... Uh, Wilderness Kydex Joey, this is one of his sheaths, and I just put the fatter Ranger Band on it and cut it to length about that much so it would fit over the majority. On this side, a good way to do it, if you use this size Ranger Band on one of your sheaths, is to unroll it. So if I unroll this side, because they roll up nice and easy for you. I have some paracord that I keep in there. And I also have a smaller ferro rod that I can keep in there. But the rolling is one of the things that makes these Ranger Bands so versatile, if you ask me. And a lot of guys will carry kits. I mean, you'll see videos with guys that carry full kits in here. I'll show you what I mean by that. This one isn't going to necessarily be big enough for it, but you can see the start here. Some guys will actually put a full Altoids tin kit up into their Ranger Band. I'm not big on doing that only because I don't really carry a whole lot on my sheath, but this is just to show you that you can. 
And once you're working, you just gotta work these a little bit. Okay, so this one isn't big enough to cover the whole the whole Altoids tin, but you could make one that's a little bit longer and fit this whole Altoids tin onto your sheath. So you can have it covered on the bottom and covered on the top and have a whole survival kit right in there with your neck knife or with your sheath. And then to take it out, all you would do after you've worked it in is just roll it down. Rolling it down gives you the best access when working with Ranger bands. And then it holds its shape and all I need to do is throw my ferro rod back in there if I want. Uh, let's see, another project. I showed the Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe in the other video. Um, same premise here. I have some whipping that I did underneath and over the top of the whipping I threw on a ranger band. So let's see, it's broken up right there so you can see the whipping underneath and kind of the rolling. The rolling technique is the best. Once you get it over this handle just continue to roll the ranger band up and when you get up to here unroll it onto the whipping. And that's to prevent the overstriking with my Husqvarna multi-purpose forest axe. So not only does it have the whipping to protect it, it has the ranger band to kind of hold it in place. See that okay? And once again, the best way to work up a handle or on a handle is to roll the ranger band up. Let's see what else we got over here. A um, couple more quick things, guys. This is my Swedish um, military backpack, and I'll do a full review on this at another time. But as far as Ranger bands, another thing I use them for is to uh, fasten the excess cordage. So this cordage, kind of like, or uh, the webbing, kind of like here. Once I fasten the buckle, you see how it hangs there? I'm not a big fan of straps that hang. So I'll roll them up and just use a ranger band to fasten them into place. See how that's rolled up and fastened? Um, you can see it down here too. See this buckle? There's the... Fastened, I rolled it up and used that ranger band. Same thing on this side. And there's another one. So once I adjust my straps, I have that excess webbing here. I roll it up and throw a ranger band around it. And it just keeps them in place, keeps it neater looking. Um, and I don't have those straps hanging off when I'm hiking or scouting or whatever I may be doing. Alright, so let's give a quick example. Here is the whipping that we did on the cold steel shovel. And this one, this piece right here, looks like it'll be about enough. That's about all we need. So the first thing we want to do is get it over this. Oops. There we go. So I have it coming up a little bit further on the top and a little bit further than the whipping on the bottom. And what that's going to do is kind of solidify my whipping and hold it tight and give me an extra grip. So not only do we have the whipping that I showed, just like on the axe, we have the whipping, but this is less for overstriking and more of grip. It's going to hold it nice and tight on there.
So it's just as easy as that. And I mean, if this was up a little bit higher, once I got it over this bottom part of the handle, I would have just rolled it. We didn't need it on this one, but I would have rolled it up the handle just like this until we got right to the whipping and then I would have unrolled it onto the whipping. And this is primarily just some grip for me, but I know guys that'll keep stuff in there. Um, sail needles and things like that. Okay guys. Well, there is some whipping projects for you. Let's throw our ferro rod back in our classic number two sheath. Whoops. I'm glad you could join me today. I hope that I was able to help out, kind of give you an idea of where you can get Ranger bands or bicycle tubes. Um, go with the bike stores, guys. The bike stores are going to be the cheapest place to get them. And the majority of the time, guys, bike store guys are very cool and they're willing to help. Um, they'll usually provide them for you if they have them. Um, I also showed cutting them. You can cut them with a knife or you can cut them with scissors. Uh, different uses for them. Um, one thing I didn't mention is I also hold stuff together with them all the time. So let's cut a smaller one here. Let me show you one more thing really quick here. So let me cut this one into rubber band size. And let's say I just have my gloves. I wanna throw my gloves onto my pack or at the very least, I just want to keep my gloves together. Just throw a simple ranger band around them. There we go. All I need to do is hook a carabiner into there and hold them right off of my pack. So just another simple use. You could hold things together um, Robert from Bluegrass Bushcraft, the um, uh, bow drill sets that he sent me are held on by Ranger Band. Pieces of wood, uh, fat wood, you could attach fat wood to a sheath, things like that. Anything you want to attach, you will use them um, a lot of cases like a rubber band, but once again, rubber bands are weak and they're going to break on you. So I hope I was able to help, guys. Um, I thank you for the request and the questions. I thank you for watching. It's very nice to see everyone, and we will talk to you again down the road, guys. Bye-bye.